As you mentioned earlier today, you started out in 1994 with like 5,000 in revenues, and today, what are roughly what are Kaspersky's? No, when, when we started, it was $100 per month. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. And what are the revenues of Kaspersky Labs today? Uh, last year we made about 400 million dollars, and this year we expect close to 500 million. So wow, half a billion. Really. Fabulous! And you're amongst the top um, antivirus uh, software We're companies. Number four. Yes. Number four worldwide. Okay. So, what prompted you to go off and start yet another venture? Well, I've been working for 14 years with Kaspersky, and. Uh, I just needed to, to do something else. And uh, we had this daughter company, InfoWatch, which we established back in 2003, but somehow the venture didn't go. We had problems with, with the product, we had problems with the management, well, we had all the problems. And essentially, we faced the choice either we release this venture, close it, or we put it within the company and the company structure. But the company, InfoWatch at that time was already very different. It had different uh, culture, it had different uh, channel, it had different uh, companies uh, as customers, it had, it had different everything, different technology, etc. So um, the acquisition or implementation with Kaspersky could, could have some risk. And um, in 2007, Kaspersky Lab had tremendous growth. It was the fastest growing year. We had 126% of growth. And um, what to do? So we, I just decided to step back as a, as, as a CEO to become chairman. So I had free time and I said, OK, I will, will take the venture. And this is how I actually become, become a manager and the main shareholder. So the agreement is if, uh, if I make this big, then we can later on make the acquisition or make a merger with, with Kaspersky because it's very logical. Sure, absolutely. Did you raise venture capital for Kaspersky Labs? Never. Would it have been possible in those days? <laughs> uh, well, yes, it was one of the reasons that it was very, very difficult. I actually remember, like I went to Wall Street in uh, 1999, mm -hmm. just in the middle of this internet bubble, uh, looking for money and I was accepted like a crazy girl <laughs> who antivirus you don't have any chance against semantic to get it right and um, they say everything is now about the internet you're not an internet company so we're not interested so I, I failed to, to get any money and um, I came back with um, uh, with a big anger I was really very angry on, on, on the situation. I said, well, I, I will prove <laughs> that we can be better than, than you think. And then now we, we have um, venture capitalists uh, calling to us and betting us to put money on the Kaspersky. And, we, and you're not taking it? No, we, we're not taking it. We actually thought about private placement, but postpone it because of the market conditions. Sure, sure. Uh, but right now we probably will come back to the idea because, of course, uh, the company right now is in a quite, quite advanced stage and to put the company on the next level we would need some, some maybe help, not even the money because the company uh, is in very good financial shape, we mm -hmm. have about 100 million profit. But uh, we need some help, like for example establishing an uh, international channel for enterprise sales. So we still have some challenges. Right. To do. And with uh, good experience and healthy partner, we could do this. So th it makes sense. Okay. Um, now you're trying to raise venture capital for your new venture. Right. Um, and have you had some interesting responses so far? Well, you know, surprisingly, I would say started from last week of August, I received one, at least one call a week. For, for the new wage. And right now, I, I, I would expect it will be more. And so, yeah, I believe we. I can have a chance. Well, well, you've certainly proven yourself with um, Kaspersky Labs. How would you say the environment has changed in, in, in Russia since you launched Kaspersky Labs? Is it easier to launch a technology company today than it was back then? 
Uh, well, it is easier and it's more difficult simultaneously. It is easier because um, right now there's this better access to money. At least there is some access. Mm -hmm. When I started, it was almost impossible. Nobody would believe in the software company that I forget. Um, it's easier because there are already good examples, because there are some experienced people on the market. You can hire good people, uh, which that time was very difficult because nobody had experience in marketing for example. Mm -hmm. And all the marketing I started by myself. So I, I, I learned it by myself. I had all the experience, I made all the mistakes possible. So it's all was uh, was by, by, by end of figure. So right, right now it's a little bit easier. On the other side, the competition is higher. There are more international companies. And um, if we're talking about software market, for example, so many international vendors are in Russia. Right. So the companies need to compete not only on the local level, but also on the international level, even within the country, which makes us more difficult. Now, the other, the other problem or issue is if you talk to most venture capitalists, they'll tell you, oh, there's lots of great brain power and technology in Russia, but it's not a good environment to do business. And they usually advise Russian companies to move their headquarters to somewhere in the West. You've managed to stay in Russia. Will you, will you do the same with the new venture? And how do you convince investors that their money is safe in Russia? Uh, you know, yes, I, I, of course, I, I, I know this, this type of discussions. Um, but um, the development, the development, and the brain power, as you mentioned, uh, usually stays in Russia. So it doesn't matter where your headquarter is. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's number one. Number two, if you want to have good product, you actually should uh, put lots of resources and your personal efforts into the product, which means you need to be close to the product development. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, this thing wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. I don't believe if you have. Um, great manager somewhere in America and you have all the development in Russia that this connection will be working mm -hmm. or unless the American manager will spend 90% of his time in Russia. So that's, you know, that's um, uh, the thing. Then regarding, regarding marketing and stuff which uh, is very uh, still on the very initial stage in Russia, uh, then I think we can use outside specialists. We can use, for example, Kaspersky Lab right now uses most of its um, key managers, uh, foreigners. They come to work with Kaspersky no problem. They maybe cost a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So that's a problem. So for, for, for small company, it would be a challenge. But um, how I did it in Kaspersky, for example, when I fell to hire another level of marketing director, because previous had reached his level and uh, we didn't have um, anybody to hire, because I looked market very, very deeply through, and I discovered there is no people on our level, which we, we need. So we, we did it, uh, we split actually marketing between our franchise and between our partners. This is why Kaspersky looked very different in different countries, but it was key, key to success, because we still managed to be very local, mm -hmm. which was an advantage for, for, for that time. So, well, if you look for solutions, you will find the solution, I'm sure.